Hello everyone and welcome to this new lecture. In this lecture, we're going to cover the auto encoders applications. So let's get started. So the first application for auto encoders is to perform image denoising. And, and these basically type of auto encoders are known as denoising auto encoders. So one of the widely used applications of auto encoders is to perform image denoising. So what we do is instead of feeding in the exact same data as the input and the output, what we're going to do instead is that we're going to feed in a noisy image and then set the target to be the original image. For example, here we have our beautiful auto encoder, as, we, as you guys recall, we have our encoder network, and then here we have our code layer, followed by our decoder network. So we place this network here, and what we do in is, is that we feed in our noisy input, which is what we, as you guys can see here, this is basically an, an image of, um, uh, it's part of the fashion class um, uh, data set, which is the fashion MNIST data set. And basically this is an image of uh, one of the classes, which is pants or trousers. And as you guys can see here, here we have this image is noisy, as you guys can see. And in the actual training data, when we train the actual autoencoder, we feed in our noisy input and we feed in here our target Im input, or um, my apologies, my target output will, will be my um, clean image, will be the original image without any noise attained to it. And what happened is the autoencoder will try to basically try to work as hard as possible to reconstruct our image, but it will be able to remove the noise. And it actually works like magic, and I'm going to show you at some point how can we apply this when we jump into our Google Colab, how to perform image denoising. Again, it's pretty interesting, pretty exciting, and that's how you perform image denoising using auto encoders. All right, so let's take a look at our output images. As you guys can see here, this is basically our images, our input. So you'll find that the these, again, coming from the fashion MNIST data set. So that's, for example, an example of, let's say, shoe. So that's an example of a shoe, for example, class. Here we have our pants class. Here we have our sandal class and so on. And as you guys can see here, that's the input to our auto encoder, which is basically just a bunch of images that are heavily noised, just, you know, like heavily noisy. And that's the output. As you guys can see here, the, the um, auto encoder has been able to remove the noise. So it's been able to get rid of all these noisy inputs here and generate. And that will be my output, as you guys can see here. Obviously, the resolution has been deteriorated a little bit. And that's, again, a lot of tuning that has to come into play into how many neurons you want to choose in the input layer, in the different hidden layers, in the code layer, and so on. And what sigmoid functions you guys will be able to use as well. All that will impact here your resolution in the output. All right, so that's the first application. The second application is performing image compression. So what we could do is that we could feed in our original data. We can feed it to our encoder, okay? And we would be able to obtain a compressed encoded data or compressed encoded image, for example, or whatever data. And what happened is after you have that, then you can pass it back again to our decoder to come up with our reconstructed original data back again. So that, that's again one of the major applications when it comes to auto encoders. So we perform image denoising, we perform image compression as well. The third application is, um, which is pretty famous as well, which is can be used in image search. For example, um, let's say Google search, for example, if we take a look at the images of dogs, you will find that here are all the images of dogs. What happen on the and on the search um, engine end is that we take all these images we encoded them so we pass them through an encoder and we come up with a compressed or encoded version of that data so now i have basically just you know like a very compressed form you know of all these images captured in let's say certain matrix or an array for example and when you when me or i or anyone any user come in put in a certain image for example and you pass it along, let's say, to Google Images, you would be able to come up with, again, pass it again to an encoder that will encode that image into, again, certain, let's say, array, for example, and then you would be able to perform a comparison on the encoded or compressed data right away. So now you can basically just Google, can just take this image, perform encoding to it, 
you'll come up with an array and then you can easily match it or compare it to their you know data source that's already containing all the actual features coming from all the images contained in the data set again very very powerful all right the last uh, application which is application 4 for auto encoders is to perform anomaly detection so auto encoders are used to perform anomaly detection such as credit card fraud detection so what we're going to do is that we're going to train an auto encoder on proper or non fraud fraudulent transactions only you're going to come and obtain all the data from all the proper transactions all the good transactions that you know came from legal you know like um, uh, legal customers correct customers you know nothing fra fraudulent in there so you train the auto encoders to to do this and what the auto encoder we're going to do is that we'll you know if we feed in any input from these good you know proper transactions the tra the re reconstruction loss or the error will be very very small so this way, the network is now capable of reconstructing the input again with good reconstruction loss. So we won't have any problems in here, okay? So what we could do in practice is that if we feed in a fraudulent transaction or what we call it anomaly, for example, someone, you know, like uh, you, you, let's say you live, for example, let's say in Canada, let's say, and then you have a visa, for example, in Canada, and all the features are captured about a certain customer, a Canadian customer, that for example, let's say shops, let's say in Toronto area, you know, all his expenses did not, let's say, exceed, for example, a thousand dollars, for instance. He's very, let's say, you know, he goes to Tim Hortons, he goes to McDonald's, goes to all these like known shops. So these are the normal transaction. So if you find, for example, that, you know, let's say the credit card number has been stolen and someone, let's say somewhere else, let's say in, you know, like in, in South America, for example, and and you find the transaction came from south america and let's say it was like five thousand dollars so the features of this specific transaction is completely different compared to the features for the normal or proper transactions because of the location is different the amount is different that's very different so if you feed in this transaction or this fraudulent transaction or the anomaly what happened is is the reconstruction loss of the auto encoders will be very very large so now what you could do simply is that you can set a threshold to perform anomaly detection so basically if the reconstruction loss exceeds a certain number then you will say you know what this is a fraudulent transaction we're going to blo block the credit card and for example send a message let's say or notification to the customer to let them know that they're you know maybe like a fraudulent transaction or maybe like you know the, the suspicious transaction that happened and we can be able to confirm with the customer if it's you know a good transaction or not all right okay and that's all what i have for this lecture i hope you guys enjoyed it in the next lecture i'm going to walk you through a kind of an, an advanced version of auto encoders known as variational auto encoders that will overcome a lot of issues that we have with just regular proper um, basic what we'll call it vanilla auto encoders so let's recap what we have done in this lecture. In this lecture, we have been able to cover the basic applications of autoencoders, which is um, denoising or image denoising by basically passing in the, the, the noisy image or noisy input, along with the proper or correct or target output, which is image that doesn't have any noise in it. And the autoencoder will be able to reconstruct the image without the noise. So that's one application. The second, again, that's the output and input. And the second application is to perform image compression. So you can feed in the original data, you encode it in, you come up with a compressed version, and then you'll be able to decode it back and you reconstruct your original data again. The third application is if you perform image search. So here, if we feed in all these images to the encoder, you will be able to come up with a compressed or encoded version of the data. And what Google, for example, you know, do, um, to um, for example let's say search for images you can take any image that the customer will feed in you encode it and then how you can be able to compare basically both encoded versions so you can easily locate the image and perform image search and the last application is to perform anomaly detection by training the auto encoders only on proper uh, classes only or proper transaction only and then when you feed in any let's say fraudulent transaction or anomaly transaction the reconstruction loss will be large 
and then basically the auto encoder will be able to detect anomaly uh, transactions or any fraudulent transactions and that's what all what i have please enjoy tensorflow 2.0 practical advanced and i'll see you guys in the next lecture